All right, guys, today's debate is 155 track length versus 163, and the new one, short tunnel with a longer track. What's that all about? Well, today we're gonna discuss that. One of the most requested questions I get a bunch is, what do I prefer track length wise? And my answer to that is, you know, me personally, um, don't take what I ride as what you should ride. Remember, it should always be what you're looking to do terrain wise and, and riding wise. But for me personally, in the snow I ride and the conditions I ride, um, steep technical terrain, I like the 163. But I like the 163 in a 155 tunnel. A lot of you guys have been asking why I do that and what are the benefits. So we're gonna cover that today. So this sled right here, this is a 163 with a stock tunnel. And so as you can see here, um, you know the, the track uh, comes out and the tunnel sticks past uh, the track. And and really, so Polaris does this for a couple reasons. One is um, the the back cooler on the Polaris needs snow to keep the sled cool. So uh, the snow flipping up here, hitting the flap, uh, hitting the heat exchanger, that's what keeps the sled cool. However, for me, um, the, the back of the tunnel and bumper, that act as a wheelie bar. So picture as you're riding through the snow and you're trenching and going down, what happens is the sled will only go down so far before it gets hung up on this stuff and running boards and then it stops, gets stuck, track starts spinning and then all of a sudden you're cussing at yourself because you get stuck, right? So over the last four years I've been doing this combo. I've been doing, um, so this is a 155 tunnel with a 163 track. Here you can see the track Definitely you can see the difference, right? So here the tunnel sticks back, sticks past the track. On this setup, the track actually comes quite a ways past. And what is happening here is we have less in the snow as it's, as it's basically digging down and it allows the track to keep digging down to hopefully grab something or, or lift the front end a little bit more to keep you going. So this is a, a combination that I've been running for the last four years that has worked really well. Um, as far as cooling wise, because remember the whole reason this is done this way is to get snow up on the cooler. Cooling wise, this definitely did run a tick hotter, but it was manageable. It was something where if it started to get a little hotter in temperature, you know, I could dip off the trail and, and um, it was manageable for sure. It's amazing the difference between this setup and this setup in how it transfers and uh, basically rotates further into the snow. And what it allows it to do is get that wheelie bar. Instead of a long wheelie bar, it's a shorter wheelie bar, okay? Thus, now we get into the new setup. So this sled is a 163 track with a 155 tunnel that's cut four additional inches. So visually, you can see just how much more this track is actually sticking out past the end of the tunnel bumper. Um, this snowmobile will flip over backwards before it gets stuck because there's nothing to hold it up. This is something that is way more labor intensive um, than this combo. So uh, on the 155 tunnel with 163 skid and track, it's really simple. You buy a, a track, do uh, either Ice Age rails or, or the next tech carbon rails, and you're done. Um, that, so that set up uh, on budget side of things um, it, and, and labor, time is a lot better than this setup, but I think this setup is going to be unreal when it when we're talking about going through the snow. And so when you embark on this adventure, it's uh, cutting the tunnel and then basically you're having to cut out the crossover heat exchanger piece. So basically right here is when you cut this part of the tunnel off, you have to cut the crossover piece off because this coolant runs through your heat exchanger and crosses over in the back here. So you have to cut this piece out and basically weld it back in to uh, the bottom of the tunnel. Um, this is again uh, a pretty tedious uh, project but I think um, the results are going to be pretty ridiculous. So uh, I'm excited to get this on the snow a little bit more. Um, I'm doing this on my personal stock sled and uh, the, the monster build, the, the turbo. And I think um, you're going to see some rowdiness out of this package. 
I have a lot of riding time on this setup where what I could feel over the stock tunnel is when you go when you're going down and you want to rotate that sled back around it allows the back end to to basically wash out quicker allowing you to get back up and so I think that's even compounded more with this. I'll tell you one thing that caught me off guard riding this is let's just say you're in a typical position when you're side hailing and you see something and you want to go up and you go to go up. The stock tunnel will get into the snow and it acts as a stop. It's hitting the wheelie bar like we're talking about. And so you get used to that and you can predict that. When there's nothing back there anymore, uh, it's so much quicker to react, which caught me off guard a little bit, but it also told me that, holy cow, this thing is going to be more reactive, um, get up on top of the snow better, more responsive. And so I think the benefits of having that wheelie bar basically eliminated is gonna be pretty crazy. I hope that answers some of the questions that you guys have had about why I choose the 163 with the short tunnel. As always, if you wanna connect with us, ride with us, or shop with us, visit the links below or chrisbrandt.com. And please, if you have any additional questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll answer them the best we can.